Now let's talk about the threading of the inside here. Let's go to our modeling mode. And here, down in the timeline, you'll see there's a feature that says thread. Now if you right click on that, you should be able to say edit feature. Let me try that again here. Yep, edit feature. And it tells us that this is a 3.375 or a three and three eighths with six threads per inch. It's a right-handed thread. So that's 3.375 for the outer diameter of the thread. It's okay that. Now I'm gonna do an inspect and I'm gonna pick this inside diameter here. And it tells us that that is 3.205. So remember that 3.205 and 3.375. Those will be important when we go to do our threading operation. Let's go back to cam. And because I was playing with the timeline, it thinks the model might have changed here. So I'm just gonna right click on setups and tell it to regenerate all those tool paths. So let's go to our turning pull down and we will select turning thread and let's select our tool so there's our ID threading tool we're going to be doing inside threading for my geometry I'm going to pick this internal face here and immediately it gives us a preview toolpath going the full length of that face. And you can see we really don't want to go the full length of that face. So we need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to set my front side to be zero. And I'm going to set my back side to be minus 0.4. Let's go to our radii option and we are going to set our inner radius from a selection that's here and I want my clearance to be from the inner radius minus 0.1. So I'll be a hundred thousandths off of this inside diameter here. Now let's take a look at our passes. This is where we tell it how we want to cut the thread. So we know it's a right-handed thread. So the thread depth is how deep we're going, the total depth that we're going to. So, remember those two numbers? It was 3.375 minus 3.205. And then I'm going to tell it to divide that by 2. The number of step downs is going to be 6 passes. And the thread pitch, well, I know it's 6 threads per inch. So I'm going to say 1 divided by 6. I want to do a reduced infeed so I don't put too much load on the insert. And for the angle of my infeed, I'm going to set that to be 29.5 so that I can sweep in on the edge of the thread. We'll have it do a fade thread end, which means when it gets to the end of this thread, it will slope up rather than just ending and pulling out. You could have it do a spring pass, one final pass with no stock, just to make sure the thread is clean. And you may want to have it use a can cycle. Now, if you use a can cycle, you probably won't get this fade thread end. But again, those are choices. It's up to you. Really nothing else to tell it. We'll say OK. And I got to say, that doesn't look right here. Let's go back in. And that thread depth definitely looks wrong. Now I can come over here and uh, take a look at this expression, although this doesn't seem right. We'll say edit expression. Let me change this so the divided by two is on the outside. And that looks a little bit better. So we have a total depth of 85 thousandths. It's okay this again. And that probably looks a little more reasonable. And that completes the part. So what did we learn? Again, we learned how to bring in a sample part. 
we learned how to bring in fixturing components. We learned how to move and adjust that fixturing component for our needs. We learned how to create a folder. We learned how to do face contouring. We learned how to do cross contouring. We used radius mills to contour for inside radius and outside radius. We did a circular transformation to copy the slot around the part. We did a subspindle transfer with a part cutoff and a subspindle return. We did ID roughing and finishing. And we did ID threading. Hope you enjoyed this series and thank you for watching.